Did Bonnie Ross kind of spill the beans on the release date for Halo Infinite? Her thoughts if 343 was treated unfairly when it comes to the release of Halo 4, the backstory of the MCC, as well as feedback given to 343 and how it was taken in to consideration when it comes to making Halo Infinite. Stay tuned throughout the video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you some news informational updates stuff when it comes to Halo. If you guys like these kind of news informational videos please make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know you want to see more content like this. Leave a comment down below where your guys' thoughts are on the video and the topics brought up in this interview here with Bonnie Ross. And if you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date with anything Halo related please make sure to tap subscribe with the bell because we all know sub feeds can be kind of weird at times. Let's get right into the video here. So a very interesting question from my Ryan McCaffrey here asks Bonnie Ross if 343 feels like they got a little bit of an unfair shake when it comes to Halo 4. Uh, some people really like it. Some people really hate it. Some people are kind of indifferent with it. And so she, he wanted to get her opinion on this. Do you think that Halo 4 was treated a bit unfairly because you guys weren't Bungie? I think we probably should have been graded harder. I feel very proud of, of what we did with, with Halo 4. I'm most proud of the campaign. I think that we, multiplayer, we learned a lot and, and hopefully did a better job with Halo 5. She didn't want to say it was unwarranted hate or our criticism for the game. And I think it's probably a good answer because you don't want to say like, oh yeah, it was unfair treated treatment for on our end because we're just not Bungie. But I think it was a good answer. I do personally feel that 343 has gotten a little bit of an unfair shake to the community and as well as critics as well. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of their criticisms are warranted as well. You know, with the Halo 4 multiplayer, not exactly my favorite <laughs> and uh, rightfully so. And they got deserved when it comes to criticisms, when it comes to the Halo 4 multiplayer. Uh, and I think at the time, the campaign for Halo 4 wasn't really appreciated as well as it should have been. Even I don't didn't feel like that as well when I first played the multiplayer. I thought that was like, what's this weird love relationship with Master Chief and Cortana? This is kind of weird. What's this librarian thing talking about? I don't understand this. And uh, I didn't appreciate the storytelling for what it was at the time. I've always felt like the game gameplay of Halo 4 was a little lacking of the campaign, but then I kind of over the years realized how great the storytelling was and how it really kind of expanded what it is to be a Spartan, who it is to be Master Chief. And so a lot of people didn't really like the emotional aspect because they recognized Halo as much more like a bombastic, blow him up, Michael, Blay, Michael Bay almost shooter kind of game with you know some good exciting story where they kind of wanted to make it a much more personal story with Halo 4, which I think is probably the best way to go about it because I feel like the storytelling of you know big expensive blockbuster movie kind of thing was already told through one through three i saw a lot of that out in the yeah. out in the world of like oh you know just kind of hating you know hating on it because it's because you're not you know you're not bungee yeah. but i think a lot of people didn't like it due to a lot of the changes that happened in halo like the art style the tone of the game as well and a lot of the weapons like every aspect of halo 4 was changed from halo 3 and reach and i think that's what really kind of threw people off more than the storytelling itself but just like how everything was just so drastically different when i think that that was the harsh the hardest part about 343 was that they kind of jumped in too deep in trying to make it their own game where they should have just kind of gradually increased the changes over time but we, we did have people, if people and um, journalists, I think, come around like years later and kind of say, you know, actually the Halo 4 story was really good. Like, I, I love the Halo 4 story. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm objective. And I think 343 was just very ambitious with a brand new title, a brand new position, kind of brand new team kind of put together. I think that they wanted to make their own game, make their own version of Halo, and I applaud them for trying, but I think they were just a little, they bit off a little bit more than they could chew. We have a tendency sometimes at 343, which we're trying to get better, of going uh, a little bit too deep into our story, but I still love the Halo 4 story. This next section of the interview talks about the brief thought of history when it comes to the Master Chief Collection. How was it pitched? So, uh, Master Chief Collection, how, how, did, how did the the issues with that game at launch, how, how did that affect you? Well, basically, Halo 4 was actually originally supposed to be a Xbox One launch title, but then that got pushed into a little bit earlier to the twi twilight days of the 360. And so then with the release of Halo 4 back in 2012, 
and the release of the Xbox One, it left a big gap right there in development time because you would not expect another Halo game until about 2015, since each Halo game takes about three years to develop. And so then to fill in that gap of a launch of a new platform of the Xbox One, 343 wanted to make Halo 2 Anniversary, make a new campaign, new multiplayer, kind of just like how they did with the CE campaign as well. Now, generally what happened was that uh, they kept adding more and more to it. And you know, I think they got a little bit more push from Microsoft on that end, where they wanted to have all the stories of all the Halos put onto one game right there. Because with the launch of Xbox One, it was actually kind of weak on games. I remember that being a very concerning point for a lot of people. And so then they wanted to bring all the Xbox games along with a remastered multiplayer when it comes to Halo 2. And then they're like, no, let's remaster the campaign as well. And so it kind of just got added on and added on. And 343, I think, just kept saying yes and to the point where it just kind of bubbled over into this mess that we got for the MCC. That was incredibly, incredibly hard. And, and to give some background on, um, you know, sort of origin story. Yeah. So the original one was, the original was Halo 2. Then it was um, all the campaigns, but just Halo 2 multiplayer. And then we probably got a little bit too ambitious and we did it all. Bonnie Ross talked about how it was very difficult for her. Incredibly um, crushing to let the fans down. It was supposed to be a love letter to the fans. Yeah. And, um, you know, we let them down. From this interview, I could tell that Bonnie Ross genuinely was upset that um, of how MCC was received and how it really sort tarnished of on, on the that kind of note, like franchise you're, as you're... a whole and I think that now with a better understanding of development with the new engine they've invested a lot of time in that uh, a lot better communication between 343 and Microsoft and a new console and everything seems kind of lining up properly to where I feel like the release of Halo Infinite coming around should be something very positive to look at. So Ryan McCaffrey asked Bonnie Ross this question of how does it feel being in charge of the Halo franchise? There's a lot of weight on your shoulders where not only is Halo just a very, very well loved game and also very popular, but also kind brand. of the face of the so Xbox platform that seems as like a whole. That would so Bonnie a lot Ross goes into detail talking basis. about how she kind of you know, understands that and how can she move forward with the platform knowing that Xbox and Halo are kind of synonymous with each other. But Bonnie Ross says one very interesting thing here. I think it's just kind of part of your DNA. It's yeah. not like, and I think that together we're better. Like when when the platform and Halo align, I think it's it's better for both the platform and Halo. Yes, when the Xbox platform and Halo align, it's ultimately beneficial, which we did see that back in the original Halo game back in 2001, how without Halo, the Xbox platform might have been just a complete flop. So I personally take this as a potential hint towards Halo Infinite being a release game for the Xbox console coming out potentially in 2020. It seems like that's enough dev time for Halo to kind of create a new engine and create the game that they want to make, as well as the rumors going around saying that the next Xbox consoles that are going to be released are potentially in the fall of 2020, along with the TV show for Halo, everything else seems to kind of just culminate into that final season of 2020 so i'm thinking that's the release day for halo infinite as we do know that last e3 full spencer did tease us saying that new generation of consoles are in the works right now so my assumption would be for the 2019 e3 that you would have phil spencer come out on stage and say that the new xboxes are coming out next year which is a general cycle of way things work give people a year to kind of look into this information and things like that as well as the next year of halo as well coming out so it just makes sense that the two would line together really well bonnie ross seems to be kind of talking about how it's very important for these two to line up properly. If they weren't lining up at all, I wouldn't think that she would say anything in the fact of that and probably just say that we're Halo, we're strong, we can do our own thing on our own timetable. Instead, she's choosing to say that there is a synonymous relationship between Xbox and Halo, which I would agree with, and that they ultimately are best together. And so I think a 2020 release kind of is hinted a lot more by Bonnie Ross in this interview. Also in this interview, they talk about Halo 5 and how most people, I would say, for the most part, would agree that the multiplayer for Halo 5 was actually really great. Personally, it's my favorite since Halo 3, though the campaign story 
left a lot to be desired as that it felt very messy and trying to throw too many pieces in together to try to make it fit properly and I could tell that they had some ideas that they wanted to do but I just couldn't fully realize them within the time frame that they had. Bonnie Ross goes in talking about how they recognize how the story that they told in Halo 4 was really good and she's very proud of that though that they did a great job of trying to add in more elements of the Halo universe in the campaigns, which I think is very needed because the lore behind Halo is fantastic. And I think Halo 1, 2, and 3 and Reach as well kind of just barely scratched the surface when it comes to that stuff and really kind of enticing people on those things where Halo 4 really kind of got into the backstory and lore, talking about the forerunners and things like that. And then what they wanted to do is kind of double down on that with Halo 5. But the thing was, is they added in too much stuff in the amount of time that they had. And so then adding on these new characters and things like that really became messy and hard to tell a well-spoken story with so many different elements playing at the same time. I think there were concerns before uh, we launched. We've done a good job with Transmedia and sort of like um, broadening the cast of characters. I think with Halo 5, we kind of might have jumped in ahead of time without really thinking and I think we basically told an overwhelming story. And with Bonnie Ross also saying in this interview that they think of Halo Infinite as kind of a spiritual reboot of the original Halo game. Halo 4, I think I'm really proud of the campaign. I think our multiplayer um, lacked uh, what we needed so I think we did a good job with Halo 5 on, on fixing the multiplayer. And so I look at Infinite as going to put the whole thing together. Meaning I believe they're going to go back to a much more simplified story. Good guy versus bad guy. But also giving you enticing play for the backstory of the Lord, making you want to buy the books and thin magazines and watch the TV shows and things like that. So I believe that uh, with Halo Infinite, they're going to try to tell a much more condensed, not necessarily condensed, but a much more confined story of a beginning, middle, and end kind of thing where it's very clearly defined. They know what they want to accomplish and not trying to add too much into it while also being expansive and interesting. Very difficult to do, but I do feel that 343 has the experience now to where they can kind of understand what to do with the Halo story. So I'm certainly looking forward to Halo Infinite. Continuing on the topic of the release of Halo Infinite, Ryan McCaffrey basically just straight up asks her, hey, is the Halo Infinite gonna be releasing along with the new Xbox? Is this or do you think it's important for Halo to, launch, to be a launch title? Like First party should be helping third party. Like we should be doing things that help create the best gaming ecosystem. And it works better when our big games um, are in sync with the different features that we're doing. And you see us and the platform teams and the studios are working closer than ever. So I feel really good about where we are there. Last time there was a Halo game on the same release as an Xbox was Halo 1, which is kind of surprising, even though they you mentioned in their interview saying, uh, Halo 1 helped launch the Xbox platform, Halo 2 helped make Xbox Live what it is today, Halo 3 being one of the biggest releases in game, gaming history, and talking about how these two can symbiotic relationship kind of work together, and she kind of reiterates how important it is for the two to work together, and how Phil Spencer recognizes that as well, and so I think what after Bonnie Russ says right here kind of reiterates my point. So yeah, 343 and Microsoft both, both recognizing that they need each other very much to ha have a symbiotic relationship to where they both grow together and they're both very much intertwined. I mean, Master Chief is essentially the face of Microsoft gaming, and so you kind of need those two to work together, and I'm really looking forward to the future of Halo and the Xbox platform as a whole. Leave a comment down below what your guys' thoughts are on this video here. Do you think Bonnie Ross made some good points? Do you think it kind of leads more towards the 2020 release kind of confirmed? that along with the new Xbox is potentially in that same year uh, if you guys enjoyed this kind of video and want to see more like it make sure to tap that like button to let me know you want to see some more content like this if you're new to the channel and miss any content for me make sure to check out the videos on the screen right now subscribe for more Halo content we'll catch you all in the next video peace out